Did you know research reveals that teachers routinely overestimate the quality of their classroom discourse? High quality discussions that advance student learning rarely occur in elementary and secondary classrooms, happening only 4 to 8 percent of the time. In other words, more than 90 percent of the time teachers are not leading the kinds of formative discussions that can raise student achievement and help students learn how to learn. So, how can we create a learning space that fosters and encourages great discussions? The first step in this is to pre-plan the questions that you want to use to facilitate the discussion. The questions should be open-ended to allow students to think deeply about what they're learning and to be able to continue to add to the conversation to keep it moving. Utilizing technology to help develop these questions and facilitate discussion is something that will save you time but will also allow students to engage with each other and you. There are many tools that can be used to help facilitate a great discussion, but today we are going to explore two. The first tool we're going to look at is Google Classroom. To use Google Classroom to facilitate a class discussion and dialogue, you have two options. We're going to discuss those options, which are create an announcement and create a question. In order to create an announcement, you simply click announcement and this will be able to be sent to all of your students or you can send, select, send it to select students that you check. So go ahead and post your discussion question where it says share your, with your class. Our question for today is why is it important for technology to be a part of discussions and dialogue? If I wanted to add any documents or um, photos or even videos to this for students to look at, I could do it. It's located here. And if I wanted to post this immediately, all I had to do is click post. But if I wanted to schedule it to post the next morning or another day, all I had to do is click schedule. So when I select post, it posts the question that I want to discuss on the student's stream. And the students just simply respond with their answers by clicking the class comment. Other students can respond to each other's comments by hitting reply. It's as simple as that for students and teachers. The next choice is to create a question. By creating a question, I still have the option to select and to send this to all students, or I can send it, send it to a select group of students. Um, so I'm going to pose my question, which is the same one that I've been using. And then I can even provide instructions to students. So I could even say to the students, um, please respond to the question above. Be sure to respond or reply to at least one other student in your group. I can select a due date. Um, if I would like for them to have it due on a certain day, I can upload files, videos, um, links. Please make sure that it, this button that says students can reply to each other is checked so that, if they, um, so that they can reply to each other. If it is not checked, they will not be able to reply, which kind of throws out the purpose of um, you having a discussion or using this tool for a discussion. Um, you can also select whether or not students can edit the answer. If you would like to ask it immediately, you have the option to just select ask, or you can schedule it for the next day. So when I select ask, it posts it to the student's board, uh, so it looks like this. Uh, for a teacher, uh, for a student, it looks like this. So a student will actually have to select see classmates answers so that they can respond to what their students have submitted. Um, if they would like to respond or see what other students have replied to them, they just simply click replies. As a teacher, this is nice because I can monitor who has posted and who has not posted, and it's also very easy for me to comment. So that is what Google Classroom has to offer as far as um, being able to utilize this for class discussions and academic dialogue. Reflect on what we just discussed by reading and answering the question. If you selected both A and B, you are correct. The second tool that we're going to explore is SmartAmp. It's a part of the Smart Learning series and is a collaborative tool. Let's take a minute to look at how SmartAmp can be used to support discussions and dialogue. 
First, SmartAmp is a collaborative tool by nature, so anywhere on the workspace you can facilitate a discussion. All you have to do is ensure that the workspace is shared with the students, and then just post your question, but we will get to that in a minute. The first thing that you need to do is create a space. So I created a workspace and I named it Discussion Example. And the first tool I'm going to use is my text tool. So I'm going to select my text tool and this allows me to write text on the workspace. I'm just going to simply enter the discussion question that I would like my students to respond to. I'm going to select the check mark when I'm finished asking my question and I can manipulate it and put this text anywhere on the page. From here, my students can use any of these tools to the left to respond to this question and I can see where they put their questions or their responses um, and I can respond directly to them. They also have the opportunity to respond to each other. And the next tool that we can use for discussion is the messenger. So once I have already posted my question, I go down here to the little speech bubble and I can continue my question and questioning and dialogue with students. So I can respond to a specific student by saying, Trace, can you please elaborate on what you said when discussing SmartAmp? When you post a question on the workspace, it tracks exactly where the students posted. This is the same thing with Messenger. So you do not have to worry about losing a conversation. You don't have to worry about knowing where your students have posted because this little tool right here locates them. Um, so this entire conversation will be housed in this message box. You'll know the exact location and you'll also be able to see the conversations between students. It also saves every message that the student sends, even if they delete it. So when the conversation is over, you can archive it, send it to students, send it to other teachers, and really use this to continue on the conversation that was had. This is a great tool that was made to facilitate discussions and collaboration, and is something that is definitely worth taking a look into. Take a minute to reflect on what we just discussed by reading and answering the question above. If you selected both A and B, you are correct. As always, you can use other tools such as todaysmeet.com, which offers a single streamlined discussion board. If you create an account, you will be able to pause conversations, mute students if needed, add prompts or other discussion starters, and archive your discussions so that you can come back to them later. In closing, knowing and remembering that when students are engaged in discussion and dialogue that is relevant and interesting to what they're doing, it excites them about learning and leads them to contribute more and more to class discussions. Creating questions that ignite this interest is the key to success. Join us in the next module to discuss how we can utilize technology tools to use strategic questioning to support your discussions.